Hey babes, listen up. Today's interview is one that you have got to listen to until the very end. If you are running a business, and I know that you are because you're an entrepreneur listening to this podcast, it's time to start treating that business like a freaking business. And that means not only are you going to have to file your taxes, boring, I know, but critical, you also have to have some legal protection because I want to bring you in front of an attorney that I think is absolutely amazeballs. Her name is Andrea. She has a company called Legalpreneur, female attorneys that help the little businesses like yours get to the big business status by helping them not get themselves in legal trouble. Because let's be honest, you are out there creating a lot of good for the world. Let's make sure it doesn't go bad with a lawsuit that will end up financially crippling you. So if you are sitting there thinking, oh my God, she just scared me. That's not the intent. But listen in because I guarantee you, you're going to get a few nuggets from today's episode with Andrea that your business cannot live without. And June 21st, she's coming into the podcast Her Network to do a private masterclass and training on some of that protection that you need and how to go about getting it. And if you're in the network, you get to sit in the chair, listen to her, ask the questions that you need asked, and then go get that protection that you need. So if you're listening to this when the episode drops and you're not already in the network, what the heck are you waiting for? Go grab your membership. The price of the membership alone is worth the hour of attorney advice. You're going to get one-on-one with Andrea. If you are listening to this after June 21st, don't worry. You may not get the question and answer time with her, but we will put the recording in the portal so you can go back and check it out. See you all there. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the B Word Podcast, the podcast for women who know they're meant for more and just need a little bit of help getting there. I'm Joanne Bolt, and I am obsessed with helping women just like you move out of the messy middle and into a business that is sassy, classy, and a little badassy. Together, we'll unpack it all from money and mindset to the little simple strategies that you can implement today in your business. Grab a glass of wine and your AirPods and curl up on the couch because happy hour with your besties has begun right now here on The B Word. All right, babes, welcome back to The B Word Podcast. I've got a super special guest for you this morning. I actually heard Andrea on a different podcast because she is the legal guru. And let's be honest, the legal stuff, it's not sexy. Like it's not what us as entrepreneur females really want to dive into. But she mentioned a few things on the other episode I was listening to that made me pause and take a look at my own business. And so I thought if I'm pausing, you need to pause. So Andrea, I'll let you get into it and kind of Tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got into this and um, a little bit about what's going on in your world. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. So I am really just a serial entrepreneur. (laughs) I started my first business in law school. Not that I didn't have enough going on, but I was not making money and I needed to make money. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to start a business. And I started selling, really it started with me selling on Poshmark and then I I started my own clothing boutique. We had a we started a website and then we had a brick and mortar store. We manufactured. So we went through that whole retail and wholesale side there for e-commerce. And then I when I graduated from law school, my dream was always the big law firm job. Well, I got the big job and so I thought it was set for life. And very quickly realized that I was not set for life because I hated it and it's it's so funny because the first week there, it just hit me. I was sitting there in my office. I mean, I was in Cincinnati, Ohio at the time, just the most lavish looking office on the 38th floor in the tallest building in Cincinnati. I'm a huge baseball fan and I could watch a Cincinnati Reds game from my office. Like it was absolutely beautiful, but that's awesome. Or I was, it seems to be, yeah, it, it seemed to be, and I was making more money that I could, than I could ever imagine making. And the first week there, all these old white men in three piece suits were walking by my office. And it, I don't even know why, because I had like my summer internship there. But in that moment, it hit me and I was like, oh my gosh, they've been here since they were my age. And I was like, I cannot sit. 
my butt in this chair for the next 40 years of my life. And I remember just that first week, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to handle this for the next 40 years? And my, now he's my ex-husband, but my ex was staying at home with our son who was eight months old when I started. And of course, like he was not supportive and I had to stick it out. He's like, well, you just got to at least stick it out a couple of years. <laughs> and I, I told him, okay. But in my head, I was just like, I, I have no idea having to stick this out for a couple of years. Cause it's, it was like the moment I got there, I was trying to figure out a way out. And oh. The reason I've, I'm telling you all this is because the first business, it was clothing. It was a clothing boutique. And I had a whole network of small businesses of clothing boutique owners. Once I started at the firm, they kept coming to me asking for help. Well, they normally just couldn't afford the rates. And finally, the firm told me, because I kept trying to bring clients and the firm said, small businesses are not quality clients. We don't want them. And I was seeing a completely different story because at this time, it was about 2017, 2018. And this was when the retail apocalypse was going on. So in the news, all you were hearing is like retail's dying. All these malls are shutting down. But I saw the complete opposite story. It's not retail that's dying. It's these big box stores. People like the small boutiques, they're thriving. They're booming. And so I, I had an idea. I was like, I, I have a feeling that if I go out on my own, have my own firm, I will have clients. Because I just saw this steady stream of small businesses that needed help and they didn't know who to go to. And so I just, I was just like, okay, well, somebody has to serve them. Why not me? And so I, now I had this new vision, but my husband at the time was not on board with it. However, luckily one day we were, so we were in Cincinnati, Ohio. We were planning to move to Houston where my family is. And on a Monday, we put our house for sale. Wednesday, I remember texting him and saying, oh my God, I'm so miserable. I'm ready to quit. Can I just quit? And he said, why, why don't you just wait until we have a contract on the house? That way we know it's going to sell. And I was like, that's perfectly reasonable. I can wait for that. And then Friday comes along and I get fired. And I am like five minorities rolled into one. So I always tell people I manifested getting fired because I knew if I got fired, they had to give me a severance package. And that's what happened. And so I always say like, I manifested it. I manifested getting fired. I I got the severance. And that night I started my law firm and I'm not going to say it's been all up. Like, you know, it's not been all uphill. It's been a a roller coaster ride for sure, but it just shows divine timing. And like, when you know something you're meant to be doing something else, like the universe will make sure you're doing that thing. And so that was April 30th, 2018, almost, you know, a little over five years ago to the day. And I've been honestly just living the dream, building an empire for small businesses, online businesses. And I, so I started my own law firm and then we transitioned to legalpreneur because my vision now is at one point in the law firm, I had two, I had more clients than I wanted to serve. I didn't want to hire more attorneys. And I had this idea of legalpreneur, which is as similar as it can get to legal zoom, but we're, we are very different in a sense, my mission now is to not just help small businesses and online businesses, but attorneys as well. And now we match the two and help them both grow. Okay. Let's loop in around to that for just a second. Before we get into the legal stuff that the entrepreneurs need to know, I think it's really critical for my audience to take a listen in and, and realize that you started your business because A, you saw a need to serve. And you saw that it wasn't being done somewhere else. And I think a lot of times as women entrepreneurs, we start our businesses because it's either something we needed ourselves, or we realize that nobody's bothering with it. And so we're the champion for that. And that is, that's when the magic gets sprinkled Mm -hmm. in. I think that's when the passion happens and like, that's when the good stuff occurs. Yeah. I, you know, I work with a lot of small business attorneys now, and they just, a lot of them don't have the passion. They're like, Oh, I'm, this is just something for me to do for a long time. I struggled with helping or coaching attorneys. Cause I didn't feel like I had anything to serve. I'm I, cause I didn't, I never felt like there was anything special about me. I, I didn't, I was like, what do you mean? You need help from me. Like I just go and serve small businesses. I don't know what you mean. And then I, I realized like it's, it really is the passion because I, I was the small business owner. Then I was the big law attorney and I realized, okay, no, there's nobody to serve these small businesses who, who I am. And 
I, I just kept seeing like all these things that lined up. And I was like, this is truly my passion, this small business owner. And because that path, I never, I wasn't conscious about like, oh, my passion shining through. I think it's very recent that I started to realize, oh, it's my, pa- it truly is my passion that different differentiates me from other small business attorneys. And not that I can teach other attorneys the passion, but I teach them the mission. It's like, we're not here to just do a job and be done. Like we're like for small businesses, like we're their champion. Like they need a partner to help them grow and they can't afford to go work with, you know, a huge law firm. Like that's not reasonable. We are their champion. Like we are their partner to help them grow. Amen, sister. Okay. So let's talk about growing. What are some of the things that you recommend a entrepreneur immediately do when they start their business? Yeah. So I call it the core three. These are the big three that every small business needs and every business will probably have additional needs, but it will depend on each business. But the core three are what I are, what I call is the core three. It's, is it's business entities, contracts, and intellectual property. When it comes to entities, basically as a small business owner, you just need to be an LLC, which is a limited liability company. And the LLC, that's going to protect you personally from the debts of your company. And I hear from businesses all day, every day that they heard from their accountant or somebody, oh, just wait until you're making you know a certain amount of money because it's not worth it otherwise, blah, 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 blah. That's the worst advice anybody could ever listen to and actually take because you have to be protected as soon as possible from your company. And that's why you want to be an LLC from day one before you're even making money. And if you're launched, you're already making money, you're already in the process, it's okay. Just get that LLC done as soon as possible because the reason you need that as soon as possible, let's say, you know, you hear, don't be an LLC until you're making X number of dollars per year. And you're like, okay, cool. Like I will get it done then. So today's day one and you're just chugging along, building your business. Tomorrow's day two, you blow up on TikTok, you go viral. And now you're making all this money. Day three comes along and you remember, Hey, I'm making all this money. Let me go file the LLC. Great. Now you're set up, you're in compliance, your risk is lower. And then day 100 or day 1000 comes along and you get sued and you're like, gosh, this sucks that I'm getting sued, which it does no matter what, but at least I'm an LLC. So they can't come after me personally. And when this happens, day 100, day 1000, now you're making bank, you're, you have more assets, you have more money personal and business wise. So you're good all around and you're getting sued and you're like, okay, well, this sucks, but at least they can't come after me personally but you're getting sued for what happened on day one or day two before you were an LLC. And this is most likely when you were more ignorant, you weren't as educated around what can get you sued. And because you were not an LLC at the time the act happened, you don't get the LLC protection in the lawsuit. So they can Mm -hmm. still come after you personally. And this is what throws a lot of people off because accountants, people in the finance accounting space, bookkeepers, They give that advice, not thinking about your risk, your liability. They're only thinking about taxes, which it is true. You cannot make the S-Corp election until you're making a certain amount of money, but that has nothing to do with your liability. The LLC, the only thing that has to do with is your liability. And once you are an LLC, you can elect to make the S-Corp. You can make that S-Corp election, which does save you in taxes, However, they don't have to be done at the same time. And the LLC should always be done from day one. Oh my God. That's the piece that I was like, holy crap. I I never realized, you know, before you really even have a business that's worth anything, you should LLC it just because you can, it's not retroactive in the pro. Yeah, exactly. And what most people don't realize, and, and I don't mean it in a bad way is that, hey, you're, you're ignorant at the beginning, like you just don't know what you don't know. And that yeah. LLC is there to protect you against what you don't know. And more, most likely you're making those mistakes at the very beginning because you only learn as you get more experience, even before you're making money, you're doing things that can cause you to get sued. One of the most common things I see is copyright infringement. You use a photo that you found on Google 
or Pinterest and you're like, oh, this is beautiful. This would be perfect on my website or beautiful to post on Pinterest or Instagram, whatever. That's copyright infringement unless you have a proper license to use that photo. And time after time, that's the number one thing people are getting sued for is copyright infringement. You, you're probably building buzz around your business before you're making money. And so even if you haven't made a dime, you're probably posting on TikTok or Instagram about your business. Well, guess what? All those things that you're doing before you're making money, you can still get sued for. And I'm not saying like, you're all going to get sued. (laughs) I'm not saying that at all. No, I mean, but but in in case the worst happens, you do want to know that you're protecting your family and your assets and, you know, your kids can still go to college. (laughs) Exactly. And it really is just a little bit of protection to take you a long way. It costs money to get an LLC, but it's just a little bit of money to take you a long way. And once you implement all the legal protection that we talk about, eventually you'll be set up for passive income. So when it comes to intellectual property, people always want to talk about passive income with this or that. Most of the time when they're talking about passive income, it is not passive income. True passive income comes with intellectual property, licensing deals, royalties. Disney, I know this isn't like a realistic example, but Disney is the number one licensor in the world. They make billions of dollars every single year just from licensing their intellectual property, their copyrights and trademarks. They're, that's their biggest moneymaker. It's not It's not necessarily the parks. It's not what people may think. It's just them actually signing a contract that says, yeah, you can go and do this thing. You can go and do this thing with our stuff. You just have to pay us. So when you create your intellectual property and you're protecting it, eventually you're going to get to the point where other people are going to want to monetize your intellectual property and they are going to pay you to monetize what you've created. And that's where in the online business space, a lot of times it's licensing or coaching certifications and it's beautiful. I, it's something that I really try to push our clients to do because they don't realize how much revenue they're leaving on the table by not implementing some of the passive income tools that you can create with intellectual property. Okay. Let's dive into that just a little bit because you have piqued my curiosity. So if you've got a course creator or an author or a coach, how, like when you say passive income for licensing their intellectual property, okay, treat me like the first, like the blonde that I am, what exactly do you mean? So I'll give you two examples for authors and then course creators. So number one, authors, I'm sure a lot of people, have you heard, have you read Profit First or have you heard of Profit First by Mike Michalowicz? So he wrote Profit First. He now has a program or an opportunity where you can license his Profit First method. I think Mm -hmm. you have to pay him 25,000 or 35,000 upfront to go and create profit first for accountants, profit first for lawyers, profit first for coaches, profit for so your- If you have expertise in something, you take mm-hmm. his methods, apply it to your expertise, but you have to pay him for the right to, to put the profit first method on it. Exactly. And so okay. that's, that's one example of authors being able to create passive income through that because he doesn't even have to- do anything. He just, he wrote this book and I'm, I'm almost certain he didn't have this idea when he was writing the book. He was like, I just want to put this book out there. But as it gained popularity, people were probably, and this is what happens. People come back and ask him like, Hey, can I adapt this book for this niche, this industry? He's like, you know what? Let me do that. Let me, that's a great idea. And same thing for coaches. It's, I see it as a natural progression of coaches. So you'll launch a course and a lot of them do one-on-one coaching as well. So you have your method and the natural progression I see for coaches is a, you teach people how to do something and then you teach them how to apply it to what they're doing. And then you teach them how to teach it. And when you teach them how to teach it, that's where you can certify them to be a certain coach. And what people, what I see a lot of people that have certifications leave money on the table for, they'll just want to charge somebody up front for a certification. So maybe they'll charge them five, six, $10,000 to get certified. And they're happy with that. 
But what I get people to hopefully get people to realize is that's not it. If they want to continue to be certified by you, now they have to come back to you every year or every two and years renew. and renew or pay and get just updated training or whatever it is to continue to have that license. Mm. And this is exact. This is, I mean, it, it's every certification ever made certified public accountant lawyers. We have to maintain our certification. We have, like anybody certified anywhere. This is exactly what it is. Awesome. Okay. I never really thought about that from the digital space. I know I always had to keep my certification up when I was a real estate agent and licensing and all that kind of stuff. But from the digital course creator or the podcaster, you know, like how that could apply is just mind boggling to me a little bit. Yeah. A lot of people don't think about it And, and not to the fault of anybody, any coaches or anything like that, but most aren't in the long term view. They're not mm-hmm. looking at the long term. They're like, oh, I can sell this certification right now. But hey, you want to actually set it up to make sure that those people come back over and over and continue to be certified. And this is where it gets to be really important about building a brand because your certification is only as valuable as your brand. And that's mm-hmm. why I am always about building brands. Yes, we can all be freelancers and just you know perform a service, do this little thing or that little thing, but building a brand that's where the real money is. And that's where the real passive income can come because the, the ideal certification that I see is you pay, you know, five to 10,000 upfront to get certified. And then every year or every other year, you also have to pay a thousand, two thousand dollars to maintain that certification. And I, I tell people, you know, new people that are, um, our, co- our people, our coaches that do have certifications, I tell them, you don't have to have this full blown in depth, like renewal training as you're coaching, you're probably coming up with new trainings all the time. You just have them like go through an existing training that you have. And then great. You've gone through the training. You're still certified. Yeah. Get the update. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're an entrepreneur listening to this and you're sitting there thinking, holy shit, like I've got to talk to this girl. Um, you've got all the legalpreneurs. What would the first step be? Like if I'm not even thinking about things like licensing, do we reach out and get a hold of you? And then you put us in touch with the correct person in your organization, or like, do we just go to the website and hope for the best? Yeah. So I suggest the legalpreneur membership. So this is really the starting point for everyone. It is, uh, we have our base membership and our advanced membership. Our advanced membership gets you all access to your own attorney for only $349 a month. That's it. You get unlimited emails, a phone call every month. You get document review every single month, access to all of our contract templates. We do your LLC filing for you. We maintain it for you every year. We have a trademark search for you. There's really a ton. Everything that we teach, it's all included in that membership. And then the base membership is 99 a month. And that includes everything minus the attorney. So a lot of people really just getting started brand new. They either can't afford to work with an attorney or some people really knew they honestly just may not be there yet to need that one-on-one attorney advice. They just need help with the legal stuff. So that's really a good fit. We still do the LLC. We get your, you have your contracts, your um, document review, all the trademark search. We start everybody off with a business audit. So we go through, dissect everything you have, tell you, lay it all out there for you. Like, hey, this is the legal protection you currently have. This is the legal protection you still need to close all those gaps. And so we our goal is to really just provide a full comprehensive approach to your business and always keep eyes on it to know, you know, when you create something new, we tell you, Hey, you want to do this with this. You want to make sure this is protected in this way. That way, as you're creating your a being protected, but also we inform you of new opportunities. Like, Hey, you're, you're doing this. Like you should think about doing this. So what I, I love the name legalpreneur, not because I, I, started using it, but because it really encompasses who we are. We're not just, Hey, you're one and done attorney where it's like, yeah, yes or no answering questions. We really do bring the business side of things to it because I, that's my background is business. And I, I just, I love talking business. And so what I realized in our, with our clients was 
they loved not just having me as a legal resource, but also as a business resource. And again, when people when attorneys were asking me, Hey, can you coach me? Can you teach me? That was one thing. finally I realized like, Oh, I bring the actual business background to it. So now when we train our attorneys, we train them not just about, Hey, this is the legal stuff that you're helping the clients with you know, this is how you really build the relationship with them. But also this is the business acumen that you have to have to really help them grow as well. So that is like that gap. I feel Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So many women really, really need because they start their businesses. They hop on TikTok, they get on Instagram, they become a coach. They start a digital course because they took a class on starting a digital course. And now they they think that they should do, they start a podcast like I did. And then they go, oh, what now? And they don't even know, like, you don't know what you you said at best. You don't know what you don't know. So you don't know the next step to take. So if they go in and they do the $99 a month membership, do they get the audit or does that have to be with the bigger membership? Like, how do they know when they need to go from 99 to 350 a month? Yeah, so the audit is included with both plans. The, when do you know you need to move from, 99 to 349 really when you're like okay I really just need one-on-one legal advice because getting I'm the first person to say like when you're just getting started you probably don't need one-on-one legal advice if you listen to what we're teaching you take advantage of all the resources in the membership you're fine but things are go- eventually as you grow in business things are going to come up where you do actually need one-on-one legal advice that's when you want to upgrade to the higher tier of the membership And I think that this is one of those things, you know, I don't always push spending money in your business, but I will tell this, you know, my audience right now, if you're listening to this podcast and you obviously are someone who is a entrepreneur and you're either have your business or you're a serial entrepreneur and you've got three or four businesses or you're about to start one and for $99 a month, that's just one of those business expenses you can't afford to not have. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. I would rather see you not have the Mac Daddy CRM system and just use, you know, something basic like Flowdesk for your emails than not have legal protection. So if you have to figure out where you're spending money is what I'm saying, like, make sure that the money is in the legal And then you do all the stuff to run the business because without the legal protecting the business, like you don't need to make that business any bigger because you could get screwed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, I have attorneys ask me all the time about, oh, what I love how you said CRM because they asked me, oh, what CRM should I get this or that? And I'm like, I actually never had a CRM in the law firm. We were, and we were making millions of dollars. I think there's a time and a place for a CRM. Absolutely. But especially when you're just starting out, you don't need that. You don't need it all. No. I mean, I just keep my emails in Kajabi, which is where I also host my website and the blog pages for the podcast, because I'm like, yeah. okay, I had, when I, when I ran my real estate team, I had the Mac daddy CRM. Like I could pull up all kind of data on anyone at any given time, but me jumping into the CRM didn't happen a whole lot. It didn't justify Mm -hmm. that expense. And so when I started over as an entrepreneur, I was like, okay, what can we get rid of that I don't actually need that I can now tell other women, you don't actually need that. Like I've run the multimillion dollar company and I've run, um, you just don't need it yet, especially in the beginning, but you've got to have the legal stuff. So um, super, super excited over this. And of course we're going to get you scheduled into the podcast, her community very, very soon. I know you've got a masterclass on some legal stuff in there yeah. because I just feel really, really passionate about making sure that, um, that the audience and our women are are protecting themselves. Cause if we're building businesses to make money, and if you're not building a business to make money, I really just don't know what the hell you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like why build a business yeah. if you're not going to make the money, then like, let's protect the money. Let's yeah. make the money, honey, and keep it in the bank. Yes, I love it. And it is perfectly fine to be unapologetic going after the money. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. All right. So we will get all the links to all the things in the show notes. Fear not, my friends. I will get it all out there because this is not the last time you're going to hear from this amazing woman because I, again, I'm very passionate about this. So, and the fact that you have business sense is I think what draws me to you because I've talked to a lot of attorneys over the years and they're dry as dirt. 
sorry, mm-hmm. not sorry, you know, but like you actually understand the business piece of it and you mm-hmm. see where the entrepreneur is going next. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to just give you the pitfalls and the roadblocks. I actually want to help you make more money in your business. And exactly. that that's the difference to me. All right. Well, thank you again. As always, know your business, put a mic on it, make some money with it. Mm-hmm.